Hey guys, Sean here from VisibleDark.ca. Welcome to another video. Uh, in this video, we're going to be looking at uh, the HDR multi-scale transform tool in PixInsight and uh, correcting the uh, core of M13, which is often uh, blown out, um, washed out looking. Uh, so we're going to recover some of those details and uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully this little uh, tip is uh, useful to uh, many people. So I hope everyone's getting some great astro blah, 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 blah. So I hope everyone's getting some great astrophotography done out there. Um, I know for me, I've had uh, a lot of uh, clouds uh, lately and uh, haven't been able to get the telescope uh, up and running, but uh, hopefully uh, one night soon that'll change and we'll get some clear skies. Hopefully you guys are getting clear skies and don't forget to send me uh, images if you have any uh, that you want to share with the rest of the viewers of the channel uh, because that's always great. We make a little community here and everyone can learn something and we can see what everyone else is doing and uh, I really enjoy that. Um, I like that interaction and uh, maybe you do too. So getting back to the HDR multi-scale transform tool, let's have a look at fixing M13 and see how this works in PixInsight. I'm going to show you how it's done. M13 is a popular target for astrophotographers uh, during the spring season in, north, uh, in the northern hemisphere. Uh, galaxy season as uh, it's often known uh, referred to and um, M13 a globular cluster is a great example of a situation where the uh, core of the uh, the star cluster is blown out um, and you might want to uh, fix that so that it's not washed out and you can actually see uh, individual stars you can see details in the in the center region in the core um, to do that in PixInsight is not very difficult at all um, it just requires a few steps and uh, you can completely um, correct that now how that is done is by using we go to process and we go to the multi-scale processing and we want to choose HDR multi-scale transform so we'll leave that tool open for now and we'll come back to it. What you want to do before using the HDR multi-scale transform tool on the star cluster, on the center of it, is you'll want to create a mask. Now you can do that in two different ways. Um, you can do a, a range mask, which is one way to do it, which would be under processes and mass generation range mask. And what we would do is simply create a mask, something like this, where we've got the globular cluster showing in our mask here. And we can smooth that out to remove a lot of the stars, as you can see, just add smoothness to it. And it'll take off the rough edges as well around the uh, the star cluster, around the center of the star cluster. That's one way that we can do it. We can generate that by hitting the uh, apply button. And we have our, our mask. The other way that you could do it would be to use the, uh, which I've often used in my videos, is the uh, game script. And the game script would uh, simply uh, be used um, like this. So we go to uh, script, utilities, game, and it would open it up. And then we would simply add, click add, and we would just stretch this mask here a little bit, just like so. It's already positioned fairly decent over top of the star cluster. And we leave it on gradient mask and we click OK. And the game mask script would uh, generate a a mask for us as well which we have right here and as you'll see both are very similar so both will achieve the results that we want quite nicely I'm just gonna tuck one of them up out of the way and we'll use one of the masks here so you'd want to apply the mask to your M13 image so that everything in red is protected the only thing that we want to work with, the only thing that we want to affect is the core of M13. And we can see that we're achieving that very nicely here with this mask. We can turn the mask uh, preview of it 
we can turn it off so it doesn't interfere with our visualization. We're not turning the mask off itself. We're just turning the preview of it off so that we don't uh, see it on the uh, image and we can concentrate on what we need to. So at this point, you'd want to apply the HDR multi-scale transform, but you may need to... Um, you may need to play with the settings a bit. So what I usually recommend is creating a preview. So we can go up to the preview, new preview mode tab here, click on it, and we can draw a box around M13, and then click on the preview tab, and that'll give us a preview of what we're going to be working with. When you first open up the HDR multi-scale transform, the number of layers will be defaulted to six, number of iterations will be one. Uh, this is generally, fairly good settings. They work quite well in most situations. You might find you have to adjust the number of layers up or down depending on uh, your situation. Um, and this is where previewing and testing uh, the settings comes in handy. You'll want to select the lightness mask and you want to make sure that two lightness is selected as well. So we have number of layers set as six and we have two lightness selected and we have lightness mass selected. We're now ready to use the HDR multi-scale transform tool on the core of M13. And we can do that by dragging it over and dropping onto the preview image. And you'll notice what happened there, that the washed out core instantly was fixed. There's before, there's after, there's before, there's after. So we can now see details in the core of M13 and it's not washed out anymore. And that looks fabulous. And we can apply that to many different situations. M42 is another great example where the core gets blown out and we want to recover those details. We want to see those details in the core and not have them washed out. The HDR multi-scale transform can be used on that as well. Um, even galaxies, uh, the center of galaxies, M31 uh, is another example of something, uh, a core that often gets blown out and, and this tool can help fix that. But with M13 being very popular and other globular star clusters uh, or globular star, star clusters um, being very popular at this time of year, um, I thought this was a handy little tip that... Uh, a uh, little technique that a lot of uh, astrographers using PixInsight would uh, find handy. And um, I hope that uh, hope that it is handy and that uh, it works well for you. Um, if you needed to play with the settings, you certainly could. Um, moving the number of layers up, so going to 7 or 8 or 9, uh, is not as aggressive. Uh, if you take it to 5, 4, or 3 to one, uh, it's getting more aggressive and, and we don't necessarily want that. Um, if we actually give a, an example of how that would be more aggressive, uh, if we leave it on three, we can drag that over and you can see what it's done. It's, it's gone way too far and, uh, we don't want to overdo the fixing of the core. So what we would want is to find the right balance there. Six seems to work. The default six seems to work really well. Uh, seven or eight, you would notice that it wouldn't be quite as much of the, uh, it actually increased it in this case. Um, interesting enough, it actually increased the, uh, the washout effect in the core of the galaxy. So this is what I said, you can play with the the, the values a little bit and see what works best in your in your image specific situation. But um, I find the default works really well. And just make sure that two lightness is set and the lightness mask is set. And then all we do is go back to our image. We're, so we're moving away from the preview now and we're gonna actually apply it to the image. So we just drag and drop. And there we have it. Our M13 core has been fixed and we can now see individual stars right down to the middle, right down to the core. Let me know if you found this useful. Um, let me know if uh, you have a current uh, image of a, of a star cluster, M13 or M3 or M92. Um, let me know if this technique of using the HDR multi-scale transform works for you. If it was helpful, uh, feel free to comment. 
and uh, I'd love to see uh, images as well if anyone has any images that they want to share with uh, the rest of the subscribers and viewers of the channel um, that's always welcomed and you can uh, send those to me and I'll see about including them in a uh, in upcoming videos thanks very much for watching everyone don't forget to subscribe and uh, welcome to the new subscribers as I always like to welcome them and welcome back um, original subscribers uh, you guys are awesome. Really appreciate all the uh, uh, likes and all the uh, people subscribing that are helping to make this channel better. And uh, I enjoy seeing what you guys are doing and interacting with you. And uh, let's hope for a lot of clear skies coming up as the warm weather comes and we get out there and do some great astrophotography. Clear skies, everyone.